If you don't have people who can talk in tongues in the church, the church will fall. If you only got preachers in the church, the church will fall. The Bible says God has given all manner of gifts. For the building up, the edification of the church. When you and I begin to orchestrate evil against one another, it causes all of those who are standing around to be perplexed. What's going on? What in the world? Where's this coming from? Things erupting in the church and you're almost at the door and luck just breaks out. You can't be agreeing with people who love and make a lie. If you know someone's saying something wrong about somebody and you don't say nothing, you are in cahoots. God says in Revelation, not only will I destroy those who practice homosexuality, but those who support it. You better be careful what you say about one another. Because the angels are walking to and fro, up and down these aisles, up between the walls, and they're sitting right next to you. Hmm, is that right? Hmm, okay. Spiritual Hamans. We can't be spitting in somebody's face and tell them it's water. Don't worry about it, baby. You'll be all right. When you know you're treating them wrong. And you're dependent. They don't have enough discernment to pick it up. Oh, yes. And once they find out and become offended, now you want to give them some scripture. You know you need to forgive. You need to forgive. That's wickedness before God. church has to be right and spotless and wrinkle free. And the way I get my wrinkles out, I need to experience some fire. But if I'm going through the fire and you know about it, why are you talking about me? Why are you singing against me? Why are you praying against me? And you gonna tell me you love. We use scripture as a weapon for all the wrong reasons. We use scripture as a weapon for all the wrong reasons. Let me say something. I was in sixth grade, and this brother brought a Bible to school. I said, oh, that's, that's kind of cool, especially him. I said, I was just interested, you know. And we said, hey, why are you bring the Bible, man? You know what he said? So I can make fun of people. He was 13 years old. And somebody was teaching him to use the word of God to break his brother and sister down. Any weapon in an unskilled hand is dangerous. When they had that young boy out there near West Springfield up in the firing range, he was 13 years old. They gave him an AK-47. An AK-47 can knock a big man like me off my feet from the recoil. And they gave it to a 13-year-old child. The gun recoiled, it twirled back, and a bullet ran right through his head. And that's how things are done in the spirit as well. We need to be careful with the word of God. When we use scripture for the wrong reasons, we're like a Pharisee. The Pharisees, you know what they used to do? They used to make the young men feel real bad. You didn't bring your ties to church. You didn't bring what you needed to church. And they knew their family was destitute. Instead of opening up the church treasury to help out and do what's right, they make them feel bad. Well, you didn't follow that scripture. See, we need to make sure we get the spirit of the law and not just the letter of the law. That is Bible study. That is searching the scriptures. Not just memorizing it. We need to be aware when we knowingly speak wicked things about one another. Drawing on old offenses. 
innocent souls who are searching for the truth become confused because they don't know what is going on. Yeah. And you wonder why the church ain't getting built up. Not just here, but everywhere. What is happening to the gospel spirit-filled church? When Peter first preached, 3,000 souls came. And today we get half of somebody. It's no time to be playing spiritual games. How can souls be added to any church when it's full of confusion? The Bible says that when, after what Haman and his cohorts did, there was confusion in the minds and heart of the people because verse 15 says, and the city of Shushan was perplexed. They've been living amongst these people all this time. Now all of a sudden the law like this has passed? What happened? What, what's going on? All because one man wanted you to bow to him. Let's go to chapter 4, verse 1. When Mordecai perceived, you see that? All that was done, he rent his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and bitter cry and came even before the king's gate. For one, for no might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth and ashes. And in every province, where, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was a great mourning among the Jews. And one thing about spiritual people, they know how to do spiritual things right quick in a hurry. They begin to fast. And they begin to weep. And they begin to wail. And all of them, many of them, laid in sackcloth and ashes. So as Esther's maids and her chamberlains came and told it to her. Then was the queen uh, exceedingly grieved. And she sent raiment to clothe Mordecai to take away his sackcloth from him, but he would not receive it. When there's trouble in the land, and when our children are being slaughtered in the streets, our congressmen have lost all their morals, when our churches and ministries are being attacked, it's not a time for celebration. It's not a time for joy. It's a time for sackcloth and ashes. Sometimes we need to lay prostrate. Remember what our floor tastes like. And seek God. Seek Him with all our might. And don't say nothing, don't do nothing, don't go nowhere until you get a clearance. The sin is not in seeking God. Don't let nobody tell you not to seek God for nothing, especially when you're looking for understanding. But the Bible tells me in James that any man who lacks wisdom, let him first ask of God. People going to make you feel bad because you're seeking God for something. Especially if you have dreams and visions, you had better be praying. Lord, is this from you or what is going on? Oh, Lord. So Esther, which is called, she, she sent for Hatach, one of the king's chamberlains, whom he had appointed to attend upon her and gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was. Why is Mordecai acting like this? So Hatach went forth to Mordecai unto the street of the city, which was before the king's gate. And Mordecai told him of all that happened unto him and the sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay the king's treasurers for the Jews to destroy them. Also he gave him a copy of the writing of the decree that was given at Shushan to destroy them, O oh Lord, to show it unto the Esther and to declare unto her and to charge her that she should go unto the king and make supplication to him and make a request before him for her people. When there's doubt and chaos about us, we need to ask God for some proof. Amen. There's going to come a time when a man can't even trust the wife he's sleeping with. Amen. Amen. Now I'm starting trouble. <laughs> this boy been reading something. <laughs> when you lay down and God bless you, baby, I love you so much, you better keep your mouth shut. Amen. The Bible says there's going to come a time when wives will be diamond out on their husbands. And the very people who you thought you could, you can lay in her bosom like Song of Solomon says, I'm telling you, that's going to be a bosom of vipers poison. 
We need to beware of spiritual Hamans. I, see, I know y'all ain't gonna look at me at the same no more. But I need to be ignorant like that. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. There's gonna come a time when your family's gonna sell you out. They know you haven't church in your basement. And they've been tired of that fasting and praying and all that tongue talking, mm, Jesus, mm, Jesus, you know, I'm tired of hearing all that. Come get them, yeah, they're a holy roller. See, it's going to be real when people start getting arrested for the gospel. That is when what is being said here and what you've been hearing throughout the ages will become real. When you hear the clink of them iron bars, all because of Jesus. Now the gospel is really real now. It's no time for celebratory when our nation's in, a, in, a, in an upheaval. When there's confusion all around, the only one who can help you is Jesus. The songwriter says, tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He's your friend. That's what you know. There is no other such a friend. Tell it to Jesus alone. See, what we should be keeping for Jesus, we conference calling everybody else on it. Verse 5. I'm sorry, verse 6. Uh, where am I at? I did. I'm sorry, I already went through that. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 9, thank you. Okay. And Hattash came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. And again, Esther spake to Hattash and gave him commandment to Mordecai. And all the king's servants and the people of the king's province do know that whatsoever, whether man or woman, shall come into the king in, in accord who is not called, there is one law of his to put that person to death, except so that the king shall hold out the golden scepter that they may live. But I have not been called into the king Right? These 30 days, it's been a whole month since he saw her husband. And they told them Mordecai Esther's words. See, when it's time for spiritual warfare, we can't be timid. All these excuses. See, Esther was beautiful. The Bible says that. And I believe that, the, that God used her beauty in part, as well as the beauty of her spirit in part, to be attractive to King Osiris. It was all kind of part of God's plan. But see, there comes a point in time when all that God has given you ain't enough. We have to put it into action. Because yes. faith without works is what? Yes. It's dead. Amen. So let's see what happens. Okay? So it says here, uh, Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou wilt altogether hold thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from somebody else. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom, you hear that? For such a time as this. It is no coincidence that you are in the house of God today. It is no coincidence that sometime in 1973, you got filled with the Holy Ghost. That this is, that it's not by happenstance. God has a reason for everything. He tells us, that there's a purpose for everything under the heaven. Yes. See, you and I need proof. And the proof that can only come from God's holy mountain. Yes. When God gives you proof of something, yes. he'll show it to you before it comes to pass. Yes. So when it comes to pass, you know why God does that? So you know in your heart that you are hearing the voice of God. Yes. That's how you build a personal relationship. And that's why now my sheep know my voice. And a stranger... He'll show you what they've been saying about you. He'll even show you their penmanship on the listings of things they have against you. Yes, he will. Some people think that just because they're hobnobbing with the boss man, that they'll be safe from any layoffs or demotions. But there are spiritual Hamans out there that will invite you to the Christmas dinner with their family and they'll fire you on New Year's Eve parties. We have to be where? of spiritual payments.
and we need to pray. Don't say you're going to pray and don't do it. We need to pray. And when you pray, do not be afraid to call the enemy out. There are spiritual hammers that will do these things. And when you and I are dealing with spiritual hammers, we need to seek God for proof of what we've been seeing in dreams and what we've been feeling in our spirit. Does that make sense? Let's look at verse, where am I at now? Help me, Lord. 16. We're going to gather all the Jews that are present in Shushan. Okay, this is her response. And I need you to fast for me. And neither eat or drink for three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, what? I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. You see, prayer changes things. Yes. And, and, and the praying that we do, the more understanding that we'll get. The more praying that we do, the more breakthroughs that we'll get. We need to pray despite the stout words and stern faces that are against us. When people do us wrong, it's not time to get even, but it's time to turn our place down, separate from husband and wife, and be away from people as much as it can be allowed, and seek and seek, and knock, and knock, and ask. Lord, I'm out here. Jesus, I need you. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord God. Will you shut up? Help me, Jesus. Will you be quiet? Lord, I need you. Somebody seek God for something here and see if nobody get an attitude. You know, come on, come on, you've been in crying for 15 minutes. If you were right, he would have answered you by now. Fasting and praying has a way of getting rid of our messings so God can put in his blessings. When people are knowingly performing evil against us and God reveals their schemes, Prayer will keep you and I from developing an Ahab spirit. Wow, all these spirits. You got a Haman spirit and you got an Ahab spirit. Now Ahab spirits only attack church folk. What are you talking about? I never, I never read that. I never read that in no Bible. I never, you go to Kings. You go to Second Kings. Ahab does so he got an attitude because he didn't get his way because things weren't going right. And people are treating them bad, so he thought that I, I ain't going to turn the lights on. You see, they have church today. I ain't unlocking the door. I ain't doing this no more. I ain't doing that no more. They have spirits. Because you got upset of what someone has, uh, has done and said and about to do to you because God revealed it to you. See, when God reveals things to you, he'll give you something that may happen the next moment. It may happen the next day. It may happen the next Sunday. He'll tell you what car they're sitting in. He'll show you what corner they're sitting in. So that when you come into the door, my Lord, my God. We can't have an Ahab spirit. An Ahab spirit will cause people in the church not to do their vows unto God. We put our anger and our frustration above what we promised God we do. When we promise that we're going to do something for God, we can't let anyone Amen. thwart us from that. Amen. Regardless of what they may say or think. Amen. Because my vow is unto the Lord. The word of God says, that David says that I must pay my vows. Amen. Not unto people. Because people will steal from the church. They'll rob the treasury. Regardless of what they do, your vow is to pay your tithes. Thank you, Jesus. See, prayer will make us bold in God. Things that you didn't want to say, and it didn't seem timely to say it, the Spirit of God will give you boldness to say it. 
and the way you say it, if you let God use you, the Spirit of God will prick every heart and every mind that needs to hear it and know exactly what you're talking about. From here, we know the story well. After they fasted and prayed, we see that God was with Esther as she went unto her husband, the king, and how he accepted her. Esther was allowed to have a private feast with, king, with the king and Haman, where she had asked that she could have a second feast with just the three of them. And this boosted Haman's ego. Because uh, Haman felt that he was being puffed up. He was getting raised up even higher. Oh, man, even the queen like me now. I'm doing good now. All right, he went down and told his wife. But the Bible says that while he was walking full of joy, the hatred that he had for Mordecai uh -huh. would not allow him to enjoy what he thought was a promotion. Amen. When you and I hate people so much, it doesn't allow God's blessing to take root where God wants it to take root. Because your hatred is like a pruning fork, and every time God tries to get the seed, your hatred yanks it back up. Now the spirit of Haman is taking seed in us, and we don't realize it. See, a spiritual Haman seed can take root while we're quoting scripture, while we're preaching, while we're singing, while we're teaching. That's why we must pray. And Lord, search me to see if there's any wickedness in me. There are some people who will give all they have just to see you dead. Haman counseled with his wife, who suggested that she build gallows for Mordecai to be hanged on the next day. Even got the wife after him. However, when Haman, uh, when the Hamans are messing, God starts to bless him. So God wouldn't allow the king to sleep at night. See, when you and I are worried about situation, that I heard a song that said, you can't sleep at night. Something just ain't right. Oh my Lord. God's trying to tell you something. I know y'all seen Color Purple. When you can't sleep at night, God is trying to get your attention. He's trying to tell you something. When you can't sleep at night, you just cannot fall asleep no matter how much milk you drink, no matter how much, uh, was it, no dose or soda? I don't know what they call it now. I don't care how much medication you take that God will keep that medicine locked up in your stomach until you and I understand, oh, oh, I need to pray. This is Pastor Watkins from Community Revival and Outreach Ministries. I trust that you enjoyed that wonderful service we just uh, had, and I trust the Lord that it touched your heart and your spirit, and it also inspired your soul. But beyond just listening to a message, we also ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And how you do that, you just simply ask and bow before Christ. And if you're willing to lay hands upon your TV or bow your heads right where you are or sitting, if you just bow your head with me and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ that you forgive us of all our sins and have mercy upon our soul. And that not only you save us, O oh Lord, from our sins, but, O oh Lord, that you would sanctify our hearts and sanctify our souls as well as, O oh Lord, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. We accept you, O oh Lord, into our hearts and our life. We confess our sins and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. And by believing and accepting this, O oh Lord, we claim to be saved in his holy name. We give thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I trust the Lord that your heart is fixed with the Lord and that your blessing will be assured and that you'll come out and fellowship with us. And if not with us, your, your own local church in your area and that God will be a blessing to you until we see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.